First thing I'm gonna talk about is clear water bass fishing. I know it's a really, you know, general topic, but coming for, from where I come from, you know, uh, the bodies of water are just as clear, if not clearer than some of the lakes up here, you know, on Lake Mead, Lake Havasu, Lake Powell, Lake Pleasant. That's where I kind of cut my teeth fishing in. You can see down 20, 30 feet. Uh, I just fished a tournament in January on Lake, Lake Pleasant and uh, you could see the bottom in 30 feet, 35 feet of water. You could see your drop shot worm shaking down there. And uh, it's kind of a weird feeling, you know, when you can see your bait and you don't see any fish around it, uh, <laughs> your confidence is kind of right down the drain. You know, you gotta, you gotta get tricky to be able to catch those fish. So, uh, you know, you, you learn some little tricks and techniques growing up fishing those conditions, especially, you know, with heavy fishing pressure too, you know, it's, you've got everything going against you a lot of times when you're fishing down there. And, you know, this picture right here, obviously that didn't take that from Arizona. I stole that on Google. I uh, stole a lot of these pictures on Google, but um, first thing I wanna talk about is, you know, what do I classify as dirty water, clear water? How do I classify it? You know, muddy water, less than a foot visibility. You know, after big rains, some of the fisheries in the south, that's muddy water. Stained water, a great, great color to fish. One to three foot visibility, it's clear enough for the fish to still be able to see your bait, but dirty enough for them to not be spooky and you know, not be worried about their surroundings. So I love fish in stained water. Then you've got you know, generally clear water, you know, three to eight feet. To me, I, I picture Ozark Lakes, Table Rock, Bull Shoals. I mean, we're gonna call that relatively clear, but it's still not Great Lakes clear. And then you know, you've got ultra clear and that's kind of what I wanna talk about fishing today. It's Great Lakes, you know, Western fisheries, stuff like that. It's, it's eight foot all the way to, to crazy stuff. So what do I do when I'm getting ready to head to clear water? Almost like Jonathan had spoke about earlier, you know, when he's getting ready to go out on the Great Lakes, he preps his boat specifically for it. In clear water, you know, I'm trying to be stealthy out there, you know, because you need every advantage you can get. And if you're out there making a bunch of noise, you know, your boat's disturbing the fish before you can even make a cast to them, you're already at a disadvantage. So, you know, a couple, a couple silly little things that you know, I, I, in the past I hadn't thought about, and maybe I've learned along the way, you know, obviously gearing up properly with your tackle. You know, you've got to have the right tackle, and we'll go into specifics later, but the right tackle to, to, to cover all the bases with long casts, you know, you need fluorocarbon line, you need the right rods and reels, but we'll get into that a little bit more. Other thing is keeping your boat in clear water condition. I don't like having a yellow boat personally, you know, I know Skeet is, one of the best fishermen of all time and his boat's bright yellow. With that being said, I'll probably never have a yellow boat wrap. Just, just one less thing. I mean, if it's, if it's one extra fish that sees my boat through the course of the year, that's one extra fish. Uh, the other thing is, you know, a lot of fishermen can see you too. So if, you, if you're lucky enough to be doing well in a tournament, everyone's gonna know where you're at. So I, I, I like to keep a boat that's gonna blend in. I usually do uh, black or blue or something like that with my wrap because it uh, kind of blends in with the water and blends in with the surroundings. Trolling motor prop, that's an overlooked deal all the time, but the smoother the edges are on your prop, the quieter it's gonna be in the water. And, you know, a lot of times I I've literally, you know, thought, man, my trolling motor is starting to go bad. I, uh, it's, it's starting to make noise. And I, I changed out the prop and it's, psh, smooth and quiet all over again. And uh, again, you know, it's, it's not, a, doesn't seem like a major thing, but trolling motor props are cheap. They're like 30 bucks. So, you know, if, if you hit some rocks and ding up the edge, put a new one on or just file down the edges with a file because the quieter you can be in the clear water, it's a big deal. And just some basic triggers on what you can start looking for to, uh, to make these things eat. The most important thing in clear water is the natural presentation. That's obvious, matching the hatch. You know, uh, some cool things I like to do to, to figure out what the fish are eating. First thing you can do is when you, when you launch, just look around the rocks around the ramp and look for crawfish. A lot of times you'll see one scurrying across the bottom, flip over a couple rocks. And I mean, that's a huge giveaway right there. If you're lucky enough to see a crawfish, the crawfish change color so much through the course of the year. You know, we've all seen crawfish that are bright red like lobsters on the California Delta. And uh, you know, in the real clear water, a lot of times on the Great Lakes, they'll be really like greenish or natural colored. Uh, but certain times of year, they'll get orange in them. They'll get 
orange claws, they'll get red claws, they'll even get blue in a lot of places. So, you know, especially if you're fishing something like a tube or a drop shot or a jig, it's, it's very important to be able to match the color of what they're eating down there. And if it's a crawfish deal, it's nice to know what the crawfish look like. A lot of times, first couple fish you catch in the day, you look down, their, look down their throats and sometimes you're lucky enough to see a crawfish coming out. You can get some clues from that too. Bait fish also, you know, uh, in clear water, they're just that much pickier. And, you know, I found on bait fish more than color. I hope you enjoyed the preview clip. And for more like that and the entire collection, subscribe to the Bass University TV. And if you want the tackle that you see on there, I want you to go to the Bass University Tackle Shop powered by Tackle Warehouse and click right here and it's all at your fingertips. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.